Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. And I'm Weston Pew, and we're glad you tuned in today. We've got a great show. We've got four amazing houses, and we've spread them almost all the way across uh, Dallas and maybe even to a little Richardson yep. this week. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk a little bit about um, – it's interesting right now because in the news, um, we always hear people asking – um, what are interest rates doing? And yeah. it's it's an important factor because sometimes you're shackled to it for 30 years. Yeah, it's a, you know interest rates right now are are at an 18 month low. It's really amazing. It's, and it's not what anybody thought no. going into Q4 last year. That was not what we were predicting at all. Mm -mm. Now it, apparently, you know, the Federal Reserve met just earlier this week, and there had been talk uh, the like in the last quarter of last year where they would be raising interest rates every quarter. This yeah. four times this year and i think we had one small increase if i'm not mistaken and and then they they decided not to do anything this time because you know it's really the the federal reserve bank that's their only real tool against inflation and right. inflation really has not been a big uh, like a big topic in our um, in our economy it didn't come in the way that everybody thought it would mm -hmm. so again interest rates 18 month mm -hmm. low which is really great for buyers. Yeah, market's still doing really, really well. Uh, you know, certain price points seem to be slowing down a little bit. Right. But you know, it's not. And it when when we talk about it slowing down, it's not really slowing down in like pricing. Right. But it's slowing down in the number of sales, just because you know they're they're the number of people moving here has also begun to slow a bit. Yep. So. And it is the heat of the market. And so right now, even Jeff and I went on tour today, and we saw a bunch of we saw three really great. Um, Roughly 70s that had been re uh, redone, and some really great product out on there. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first ones, though, that we're going to start with today is going to be 9804 Victorian Court in Dallas. 9804 Victorian Court is a, a great home. Um, we actually, or I sold this to uh, the people that owned it 20 something years ago, <laughs> and uh, they've just r really cared for it and loved on it. Uh, it does uh, have some space for somebody to come in and do a little sweat equity and, and make it their own home. But right. by and large, in great, great house. Location's fantastic. Uh, not very far from Richland College. Uh, this is uh, about two miles from one of our favorite places to have lunch. There is a, it's, I'm gonna call it an Asian food mall that yes. is at Greenville and Main Street in Richardson, just north of that intersection. And if you have not been up there, you really need to try it. it it's every type of Asian food you could possibly want right there in one setting. And it seems like every restaurant we go to, we're like, no, this is our favorite. Right. <laughs> but, but you're like, but wait, there was that other yeah. one. But this home right now is going to be a three bedroom, two bath. One of the great things about this house is actually a location in the neighborhood. So this is actually on a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. So again, you, you get the benefit of being a quiet neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Great sidewalks, as you can see, and mature trees, both in the front yard and the backyard that kind of really help keep the house nice and cool, but also just add that that lush neighborhood feel that everybody looks for in a home. And there's only seven houses in this neighborhood. Yep. It, it is that small of a cul-de-sac. And this neighborhood has already started to have the gentrification or the updating starting. Um, the neighbor right across the street, I believe, took it to the studs. Mm -hmm. um, and jokingly, the current owner was like, if you want to know anything about the build and construction of this home, yes, the neighbor across the street. Mm -hmm. He knows everything. <laughs> um, this one actually has a formal living that you walk into, formal dining. And then one of the great things is in the back of the house, it has a really good size living room as well. And so we keep the living separated from the bedrooms mm -hmm. on this one. Yeah. Um, great floor plan. It's about 2200 square feet uh, this is a picture of the uh, the second living area that Weston was talking about with the vaulted ceilings uh, can lights looks out on this really amazing backyard um, that is small enough you could really get out there and, and mow it with one of the the mechanical mm -hmm. cutters it is not a very big yard whatsoever so this one is also um, situated where it does have an entrance uh, this is off of the master so it has a private little flagstone area and pergola and then you can actually swing around to the side of the house and into the backyard as Jeff was saying and that opens up to a larger pergola um, and the back of the house is um, that living room also looks over the backyard mm -hmm. so and this is the small courtyard that is just right mm -hmm. off of the uh, off of the second living area and the main living area uh, super super shaded back there and great for you know if you're into uh, pot gardening it is uh, I didn't quite mean that way it came no, across. It's not you know, legal if you're, yet. I don't if know you're into about. putting, <laughs> if you're into to filling pots with flowers, then that this is a great area for yep. that. <laughs> <And> this, 
awesome. so this is an actual move in ready home uh if you are interested in looking into this portion of dallas this is a great home for you and we'd love to give you more information about it yeah the uh the house is priced at two hundred seventy nine thousand dollars uh 2,254 square feet, and that comes in at about $125 a square foot. Great home. If you'd like to look at it, just give us a call. So the next one we're going to run over to, this is going to take us over into North Dallas, and this is going to be 6231 Del Norte. Mm -hmm. And this is in the, the uh, Northridge subdivision, really a, a great neighborhood in North Dallas. Uh, original construction, The uh, uh, it is right off of uh, Northwest Highway, just between Hillcrest and Preston. I'm sorry, I was kind of You're getting jogged in my head there, but it's still a very walkable neighborhood. There are a lot of restaurants just to the south of there. Uh, you probably don't want to walk, but you could certainly uh, jump on your little bird scooter or your, uh, <laughs> your and head over to Preston Center. Lots of shopping, lots of, lots of food there. So I used to live just in just a, one or two streets to the south, closer to Northwest Highway. And this is one of my favorite places to live in because that area right there, you can get on to 75 and be downtown and be into Lake Highlands, which whatever direction you want to go. But then you can also take Preston if you want to go down or you can take the toll road. So your proximity to everything, because that is more of a north, that is really like almost center Dallas. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to get in and around that area. I loved yeah, it. I would agree. And the house itself is in really, really great shape. Uh, this is a, uh, a three bedroom, two bath. It is about 20, uh, 2,300 square feet. Again, original construction that was built in 1949. And the current owner has really turned it into a show place. And it actually is so well appointed as well right now. So it's one of those homes that we were really excited when we were able to work with Garrett and highlight this home. Um, and you get to see what the actual bones of a home like this could actually be once it's dressed the way that it should be. So as you kind of take and look at the living room right here, you can see how they've t paid attention to the size and scale of the furniture and it's sort of the perfect placement. Um, this is actually the front kind of receiving living area. More the formal living room. Yep. yep. But you can see even the word formal kind of throws it off because it's not um, that tough formal that we think of from the 90s and the 80s. And it transitions into a really good dining room mm -hmm. and a well done kitchen. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they've done is the back actually has a really large and I think it's, what do we say? That one is 25 by 15 foot. Um, uh, family room. family room, yeah. And it's great because of the way that it's configured, it actually kind of is parallel to the backyard. And the way that that runs is it's perfect if you wanted to put a pool in. Mm -hmm. This is one of those houses. This is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, really great, great room. Uh, the transition between the original, I say original construction earlier, and this is actually an add-on at some point, but the transition between the, the, the main part of the house and that family room is totally seamless. Oh yeah, and that's one of the things that we kind of can tell is when you see that transition, you're like, ah, but this one, it's done quite well. Mm -hmm. Bedrooms in this one are also done really well. You've got the space that you need. One of them has been dedicated to an office. The other one is um, master bedroom, as we see here. And it is at the front of the house where it gets nice, nice, nice light. Um, and then the other side of it is actually at the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, master bath's been done really nicely in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, plantation shutters pretty much throughout the house. It's just, you know, it, it's really move in ready. Yep. And last but not least, it does have a detached garage. So you're not without um, proper storage for your vehicles as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to say thank you so much to Garrett Holloway for allowing us to feature his home at 6231 Del Norte. Yep. This was priced at 839,000, which is about 371 a square foot, certainly on the high side for dollar per square foot. But the when you look at the lot and the, the overall area there, this is right in line with where it should be. Absolutely. Great house. If you'd like to take a look at it or more information, please let us know and we'll be happy to help you with that. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to transition and go more into Oaklawn and we're really familiar with this area, but this is 4213 Dickinson, Unit 2A. But I will tell you that we picked this one because we hadn't seen one that ran on this side of the street mm -hmm. and we really wanted to get inside of it and take a look at what it offers that's a little bit different. And this area is one of those areas that is extremely walkable. Mm -hmm. um, you could be as close to what we would consider urban in Dallas as we can get in this location with um, quick walkable to restaurants. Grocery stores are just across the street. Um, and then if you wanted to get onto the Katy Trail, I would say that's just probably a quarter mile walk to yeah. the Katy Trail. Yeah, great, great location. Um, 
you uh, have access to just, I mean, so many restaurants <laughs> right there. I'm, I was trying to think of what my favorite is, and I don't really know that there's a favorite because there's so much to get to. Yep. Um, this was a, a really cool construction that was built by, you know, the, the man who was lovingly referred to as the Tin Man. Right. And did uh, these con this construction of these townhomes in... I don't know, probably six or seven different locations to Dallas, and they're all made out of corrugated metal on the outside. Super energy efficient. We've Correct. sold several of, of this builder's product, and uh, it, it's really just a, a fantastic. They were built very well when they came uh, when they came to market, and this owner has really done some nice improvements to this one that make it kind of a gem that stands out. And that's the reason why is because this one right here is one of the ones when they don't all have this much of a backyard, and I believe there's a couple of pictures Ziggy that are on the very end of the uh, of the pictures that are going to show the backyard and this one is actually a townhome that actually has a backyard and the backyard has um, turf grass mm -hmm. the entire way and a mature tree and this is something to have this much space in Oaklawn that it's not a norm and so you could have a medium-sized dog here and not have any problems with this house at all this this is one of the few townhomes that that, that i've seen in oaklawn where you actually have a true backyard yes many of them have a little outdoor space or they've got a little green space or uh, but this one's a true backyard yep and so when we walked on the inside the first floor has a bedroom and a small living room and what they've done is they've actually removed the wall between the two mm -hmm. to make one large bedroom which i thought made all the sense in the world mm -hmm. wash and dryers down and then you go upstairs and upstairs kind of you turn and you're greeted into a galley kitchen and one of the things that this uh developer did was they actually put the windows he was one of the first ones to put the windows right above the uh, countertop mm -hmm. and so it allows that nice light and this actually looks over the backyard mm -hmm. so you're always getting to participate with the backyard and then it transitions to a dining room and then a vaulted living room ceiling and so it has a really easy easy flow um, on that main floor where you spend so much of your time yeah and you've got high ceilings on this floor they open up um, into vaulted ceilings as you get out into the living room area uh, has a really big nice dining room space mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, I think these are pine wood floors something like uh, that. they're they're I'm these yeah I think these are pine wood anyway they are a a good hardwood floor and uh, great lighting that's been added to this one. Uh, in one of the, the next photos, I think you'll see that, that shows the uh, seating area here in the living room. The seating area in this room is enormous. Yes, yeah, it's probably one of the biggest couches that we've ever seen. And if you're an art lover, great, great wall space for art in this one. Uh, that's a, a view from the little office that's off the master bedroom up on the third floor looking down. and. Uh, this just doesn't really capture quite the feeling you get because you've got so much space to work with. And these are so well done that the, the walk up is even great to them. So there's a, like a little pathway directly up to your front door that's not shared with any of your other neighbors. It is gated. It is secured. Your car is in an on-site garage below in, you. Yeah, in your, two, your private two-car garage. Yep. And so the HOAs on this one are $228 a month, which is a great deal for the number of square footage that you get. Um, and this one is coming in at $380. Um, and that is, again, 4213 Dickinson Avenue, number two. And if you have any questions about wanting to take a look at this one, we would be happy to help you with that. Absolutely. And we want to say thank you so much to uh, Kathleen Murray for allowing us to feature your home. Well, and our amazing. last one today is a building we are very familiar with. I think we have sold more condos in this building than any other broker. There, that's true because we actually helped with the bank um, and moved out, I believe, 53 of them when they first came. Yep. When they came on the market mm -hmm. for that bank. Yep. It's a 90-unit building, and the uh, they had. This is one of those new construction projects that came up in 2007 and had to struggle through that recession. Yeah. And ultimately, that the developer just couldn't keep up with. You know payments or whatever and and they went back to the 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 company that held the note on it and then they hired us to come in and sell the remaining inventory but um really a, a great great building called the sorrento this is at 8616 turtle creek which uh is again a very good location it is the one section of turtle creek that runs north of northwest highway mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't realize that turtle creek wraps all the way around up through the park cities and up through university park and pokes its head right there into Dallas in the north part of uh, north part of Northwest Highway. And it's, go ahead. And, 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 and again, it's a very walkable, very neighborhood, yeah. for, I'm sorry, very uh, restaurant friendly neighborhood. Um, 
there is uh, quick food. There is, di you know, luxury dining there. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, uh, just minutes from Preston Center. This is really just right down the street from uh, where you used to live. So, yeah. you know, it's, again. again, one of your favorite parts of town. So you can actually go to Dish is the nice restaurant that's right around the corner from there. And then you can go to Top Pot, which is great, great if donuts. you want uh, Seattle donuts. <laughs> and then there is a pho restaurant that is just right there. Mm -hmm. So all these places are wonderful. Um, this is one of those neighborhoods that sits between Preston Hollow and Park Cities and is just really a draw. People are mm -hmm. so familiar with that area. And there's such a limited number of, of, of inventory that is this style and, and feel that it doesn't have a last on the market very yeah, long. Yeah, everything else in the neighborhood was built in the 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. some in the 60s, I think, maybe even in the early 70s. 70s um, but none of it's got the quality and the architecture and the, the style that this one does. Right. And it's a small 90 unit building, uh, very, you know, super luxurious amenities. Uh, there's a great picture of the exterior. This was, I think, an artist's rendering of the building before it was built, but it still looks, looks like that. just like that. And, you know, a lot of times they don't come out quite like that, but that one did. And this building is actually the, in the shape of a U. And so in the center of this building is where the pool is. And what is allowed um, it to have is you've got uh, units on the inside and on the outside. And it's a small, narrow corridor. Mm -hmm. um, this one actually sits where it's on the second floor, faces south. So it's an overlooking towards downtown and towards SMU. This right here is a quick shot of what it is when you walk out of the clubhouse onto the um, pavers, and that is the Infinity Edge Pool with a huge hot tub, and in the very back is a gas fireplace that is always always on after five o'clock. This is a quick image of that. Yep, yeah, and, and you can't really see it in that photo, but beyond those blue planters there, are uh, grills that are managed and maintained by the homeowners association and so you know a lot of people have that hesitation about living in a condo because they do like the outdoor lifestyle and this one they've thought of or tried to think of really everything that someone might want living in a condo and one of the great things about this unit and this is one of the things that as you're shopping for condos you'll realize that one of the key things you need to do is you want to know exactly where the parking spaces are mm -hmm. so these are two parking spaces and rarely they're side by side which is really great but these are also close to the elevator so you can go from your car to the elevator and then up the elevator and then just over to your unit which is i believe three or four doors down mm -hmm. from this yeah. so this is 23 and 24 of the parking spaces the other thing that this one has is a storage unit Yes, there were, there were a limited number of storage units in the building. Um, I think there were 10 or 12 storage They're units. Right it's a very limited number. Um, and th this owner does have one. And we walked it off. It nine by 16. Nine by 16. So uh, again, uh, many people have a hesitancy to buy in a condo this size because they don't have all the extra storage space. And this one's this build. This one's really got kind of got it all covered. Yep. Uh, the unit itself is a two bedroom, two bath, very well done, uh, granite countertop, stainless steel top of the line appliances, wine fridge, uh, uh, porcelain tile floors, just. Uh, really quality throughout and the great thing about this one is the way that it's actually laid out it is laid out in a roommate situation so that means that you actually have space between the bedrooms so the living room and the kitchen divide the two and allow for more privacy and quiet the other thing that you'll see in this one is that you're also going to have windows both master and first and second bedroom that are actually going to face south downtown so it's not like one of the areas is getting a better view than the other one which sometimes right. comes into play these all face and line up the same direction yeah this right here is a quick image of the master and that is a gas one-touch fireplace mm -hmm. walk-in bathrooms include walk-in bed uh, walk-in closets and also you're gonna have shower and dual sinks mm -hmm. there's not really much left to want in in this place um, 24 hour not 24 hour um, seven days a week concierge is mm -hmm. available as well mm -hmm. uh, the other amenities include it has the uh, fitness center which is immaculate mm -hmm. it has the coffee bar which is available to residents 24 hours a day uh, it has the the pool that we've talked about the the outdoor living spaces the, this is a picture of the clubhouse that's available to any of the residents come down hang out watch the game um, you're you can also rent that um, if you're having some kind of event you can put up security deposit and just use that space and reserve it just for your event very good and this one is going to come in at three hundred and eighty-five thousand. again two bedroom 
two and a half bath, two car parking spaces, and a storage unit. Yes, and this is priced right at. Well, there was one that just sold in the building. We just sold in the building hmm. a month ago, and this is priced right at what that one sold for. Same look downtown. Yeah. Um, just a, a real incredible value. So if you'd like to take a look at one of the, any one of these four, let us know. We'd be happy to help you. That's great. Yeah. That was four really good properties. I enjoyed That's all four of strong so, properties in yeah. four different areas of Dallas. Yep. So what are we going to talk about in our second segment today? So the second segment. So this has been one of those ones where I have really been excited about. Um, as you know, from our uh, Christmas party, I like livestock. And so I thought of what could be a better way than to find a company that would come out and talk to us about chicken coops. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Gina Garza. And she is the owner with her husband, Ramiro, the Little Chicken Coop on the Prairie. Yes. Thank you so much for being out here. We really appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we have realized is there are lots of homes in Dallas that have chicken coops. And we know from our experience, one of the things that um, is a feature is a chicken coop when selling a house. Uh, we listed it as an urban uh, urban farm and had a chicken coop. And I think that it was also the heyday of the market. And so we had probably like 15 offers on the home. So I thought, let's come on and talk about um, these. Tell us a little bit about what your background was and how you got started in this. Okay, well, we had started off building commercial decks and doing home remodeling. And then back in 2008, when the economy dropped, we had to find another different source of income. Sure. So we decided to build chicken coops and that's where it all started. I had my husband build me one and then I told him, hey, let's build this and start selling them. He laughed at it, but <laughs> you know, he didn't know later on that this was gonna bring in income for the family. I love it, I love it. And I think that as more and more um, first time home buyers get into the market, they want a house that can more express them. And so a chicken coop is a really good way for them to be able to be expressive. And when you and I and Jeff and Ramiro sat down and we were talking a little bit about y'all's background, you were sharing with us, and if you could share now, a little bit about you guys can customize. Yes, we can. Um, we can build, you know, our chicken coops, our design, or we can do just about any other design that's out there. So I have a lot of people that will send me pictures of what they've seen online on Pinterest, and we just go from there. That's awesome. And so your background, um, I guess Romero is the one who's doing the cutting and everything. Is, well, I do. do I do, do the cutting. Oh, okay. He does. He does all of the you know nailing and building it together. But he'll say, "Hey, Gina, two by four, you know, forty six <laughs> inches. Oh, there I am cutting with the saw." I love that. I love that. So what you did is you sent us some pictures of stuff that you've done and yes. what you can do. And so we want to take a look at the first picture to give viewers an idea of what they actually can bring up on, uh, well, there's the title and we'll click to the next picture here in just a second and we'll get an idea because you guys have been doing this for a couple of years now. We've been doing this for almost 10 years now. Wow. Yes. And so this is an example of the very first one. So tell us a little bit about what we're looking at here because it's not just Yes, this one is a coop and run in one. That's what you know. I call this one. You have a chicken house where the chickens will go in at night to um, rest, and then there's a nesting box that you would go up to to lift up the lid to get the eggs out. And then the run area is kind of more of the caged looking area. Mm -hmm. That's where they spend most of their day just pecking at the ground, insects and stuff like that. I love that. And so I grew up going to my grandparents' house back in in New Mexico. And so we would have to go into the chicken coop, but we wouldn't have that little uh, side piece. What do y'all call that piece? The nesting box. The nesting box. So I thought the nesting box was great because I remember going as a kid and I'd get pecked and this yeah. you just open it up and reach in there and grab the eggs. Yes, exactly. Makes it a lot easier for you. You don't have to walk through the coop. You don't have to worry about scaring them out of the coop. So they right. stay in there. You just lift up the lid and pull out those eggs and you don't have to worry about them running after you either. So do you typically build a coop with a run or is it just a um, coop? Usually it is a coop and a run. It's rare that we just do the coop by itself. Okay. And it's just because a lot of people like for them to be in that area mm -hmm. 24 seven. So when you get a call, do you typically go to the client's house to visit with them a little bit about the coop and what area they have? I do. I, you know, that's one of the first questions I ask them is, would you like for us to come out to talk about it? Or would you like to come over good. to talk about it? Very good. Let's take a look at one of the other pictures that we have um, that express. Um, this one was something that's a little further than what we normally see as a chicken coop. Um, 
but if somebody came to you with something like this, would y'all have a problem creating that? No, we would be able to build something like this. It's a great one. And I think that y'all use a little bit different product um, on the for the for the screen material. Yes, correct. We use hardware cloth, which is a welded wire. The gauge is a lot thicker than what you would find on the chicken wire. Okay. And it also makes it impossible for somebody to go into it and just stretch it out okay. they would have to tear it apart in order to get in so that kind of brings me to my next question if we're worried about something getting in so we we're talking maybe about like um uh, the family pet or maybe a, a kid right yes so sometimes you know the family pet if you have dogs that aren't used to the chickens you do have to worry about that so that's why we get a lot of people that want the run area they will stay in there and then the dogs can't get to them okay. even if they scratch at it they won't tear it up perfect perfect and so what is your best advice to someone who's got maybe a dog that they're concerned might go after the chickens you know my first advice to them is get a mama hen with baby chicks okay. um, because a mama hen will protect her chicks and will not let that dog get near them so if you haven't been around a, a mama chick a mama and her chicks before it is an experience and she is absolutely telling the truth because i have been chased around before yes. many times so um that is a very good point um, one of the other pictures that you brought on let's take a quick look at that so this is a great one yes now this was one of our first chicken coops that we've built and this one is a little bit different designed this one has you know smart siding which you find in a lot of the newer homes so this one um, is completely solid the only way that anything could get into it would be through the little chicken door would be the only way someone would you know, I, I guess predator wise right. would be able to get through it. And then you have a big, I call it the people door that you would walk into to, you know, clean it out if needed. And I like the fact that on these, you're able to customize paint and stain and roofing material. Is that right? Yes, correct. We do. We do offer um, various different types of roofing material. You can do corrugated tin. You can get um, hard. I'm sorry. You can get shingles. You can get a uh, a thicker gauge metal um, that you find in some of these metal buildings okay and um, they call it the r panel a classic rib panel very good so the house then uh, the chicken coop actually becomes a, a focal point kind of in the backyard yes i love that um one of the last pictures i think ziggy if we have one more so this one um is so tell us a little bit about what we're looking at in this one again. So this one is our traditional chicken coop. It's only the house in this picture. This particular customer um, wanted her hens to be free range. So she wasn't worried about predators getting to them. All she wanted was somewhere where they could roost at night and sleep and where she could get her eggs from. Very good. And I noticed that it looks like there's a little bit of space in between the slats. Yes. And that we built that that way because here in Texas, we have a lot of hot days. And so we're worried about vanilla. Ventilation. We want to make sure that the hands are well ventilated. Um, so that's why we do ours, you know, board by board, kind of almost like a fence. Okay. So as it dries up, you get little small cracks in between it, but not enough to where a predator could get in. Got it. And so if someone's looking to get involved with this and they contact you, what is a typical time frame for you to construct? Usually, um, I you know, right now we are about two weeks out, but usually it's a two-day turnaround. Wow. When they call in, if they want it right then and there, I, you know, take note of what we need to build, and then I order any of the materials we need to okay. order, and then usually two days. That is amazing. That is a really quick turnaround. And I did forget there was one other chicken coop that uh, she had sent us over, and this one is unique because... This one shows a whole different look that you can get. Yes, exactly. And that, again, is one of the reasons why I tell everyone we custom make chicken coops. Um, we can make any type of coop match your home, match a barn, match a playhouse, anything that you can think of. If it's, you know, drawn on a piece of paper or if we can get a picture of it, we can build it. I love that. I love that. Um, what's the biggest chicken coop that you can that you've ever done? Um, we have done an eight foot wide by 40 foot, 48 foot wide chicken coop. So it's 48 foot long, I'm sorry, by eight foot wide. Okay, so if, if, you, if you do the math, how many chickens do you think that's gonna hold? About 50. And if you get one egg a day? That would be 50 eggs a day. That seems like <laughs> a lot. That seems like a lot yes, to me. Yes, it is, but you know, a lot of the, a lot of the customers that do that is because they sell at the, 
um, you know, flea market or at the um, mar market. I'm trying like to Like Canton Market? Yes. Or at like uh, well, Weatherford has First Monday? Yes. So if you were telling a, uh, a client and they were asking you how many eggs, how many chickens should I start with, what is your suggestion? I usually tell them four to six to begin with and then go from there because collecting four to six eggs a day can easily add up. And if you're not eating eggs in the morning, you will have tons of eggs by the end of the week. I love that. So that would be a good way for you to get to know your neighbors is by doing a Wednesday drop off of all the extra eggs you haven't, yes. you haven't had. And, and that does work out because that's how we started. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, Gina, thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been a real pleasure. Gina and her husband's information is right here. They've got the email, phone, and I found them on Facebook. If you all would like to contact them, please reach out to them and uh, give them a call. And if you do have a house made, we'd love to see it on the show because we'd love to do a circle round to that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that is a pretty much a strong wrap for the show. We hope you've enjoyed everything. Um, I know that we have, and we're glad that we had them on to talk about the chicken coops. I was just looking through MLS real quick, and you know there are over 100 houses with chicken coops available for sale? See, I think it is a it's, thing. It's a thing. I think it's coming, people. You heard it here first. <laughs> so if you'd like to see a house with a chicken coop, give us a call if you want to get a house built. Or, I'm sorry, if you want to get a <laughs> chicken coop built, call Gina and Ramira. But thank you very much for tuning in today. Um, I'm a little bit behind. Reach out to us on Facebook. Reach out to us on Instagram. Uh, home price, uh, go to our website, <laughs> .pew.com. Uh, lots of detail there. And then uh, if you'd like to get a value on your home, go to homeprice.fyi. That's where you can put your property address in, hit submit, put a couple other pieces of info in, and you'll get a value right away along with a confidence score. Re reach out to us in traditional ways as well. Our phone number is 214-377-2223. We would love to hear from you. And remember, we want to be your realtors for life, and happy birthday to Mallory.